okay um hi all so welcome to today's webinar on uh, quality for devops so, so in this uh, webinar uh, we will get to know more about the preview of what's new the practical examples useful knowledge and some theoretical background so all this um, is uh, from our new book launch which is quality for devops team which is expected to be launched on 17th march 2020 uh, so so we have rick water and dennis joining us uh, as the panelists to let us know more about this topic so over to you all to let us know how we could uh, uh, you know the business value with the right quality and with the right yeah thank you deepika so uh, welcome everybody to this uh, webinar my name is uh, rick marcellus i'm uh, one of the authors of the new book quality for devops teams and i'm together here with two of the other authors so please introduce yourself Hello, my name is Wouter, Wouter Ruigerok. Uh, I'm an Agile Quality Coach for Society. Hi, and I'm Dennis Schurz. I'm the lead uh, software architect for Society. Okay, so thank you very much. Well, in this webinar, we would like to show you some highlights of the new book. And let's start with why we created uh, this book. And the challenges that we have in IT and especially in high performance IT delivery today. Firstly, are the business demands us to deliver uh, the business value they need and we need to deliver quality at speed. Second, uh, we see that uh, teams are facing challenges as well. Uh, for one, uh, quality engineering is everyone's responsibility. It's not a, a Tester's responsibility anymore, and uh, it's more and more integrated both in people but also in the process of uh, way of working. And with all this uh, business demand and team challenges, we focus this book uh, on organizing of high performance cross functional teams. Eh? Um, you build it, you run it, um, uh, and extending to that, uh, we uh, automate everything as long, of course, as it's useful. Is. Uh, yeah, so that's what the focus is on this, in this book. Okay, thanks. Now, what did we uh, start off with in the book? And when creating this new part of the TMAP body of knowledge, we started with creating the so-called voice model. And the voice model consists of five parts and um, the goal, obviously, is to have business value. So it starts on the left with the V for value. And to be able to create business value, the business needs uh, IT. And so the business value gets detailed in objectives. And these objectives should be met by IT. And to measure whether these objectives actually are met, you need to define indicators. So the indicators measure whether we uh, reach the objectives and measuring indicators to a large extent is testing. The result of measuring the indicators is that it gives information to support confidence. And that is confidence that the pursued business value will be achievable. And if everybody is confident enough that the value will be achieved, then the system is put in live use, and then the business will experience the real value, and then we will have a loop for value improvement. So this is the cycle that you always see in IT. And this model uh, can be used in all types of IT delivery, uh, as we will see later during this presentation. So in the books, we uh, support, or, or with the team at Body of Knowledge, we support all types of IT delivery. Um, a little bit more on these indicators. Um, if you want to measure uh, whether 
you're reaching your objectives. There's two big focus points, that's quality and risks. And together they support the confidence in the value. But these indicators, you, uh, uh, there can be very many different indicators. And in uh, our book, we describe four groups, which is indicators related to business value, indicators related to IT delivery. So, for example, progress. Uh, indicators related to the team, because the team is responsible as a whole. And indicators related to problems that arise. And it, it's better to have a few well measured indicators than to have all possible indicators, because then you will end up doing nothing else than worrying about indicators instead of worrying about delivering business value. Next. All right. Um, as uh, Rick mentioned uh, before, and the team at Body of Knowledge, as we, as we call it nowadays, uh, supports multiple IT delivery models. Uh, we distinguish three different models, sequential, high performance, and hybrid, uh, where sequential is more the traditional way of uh, developing waterfall V model. And of course, there's already a lot of knowledge on, on that, uh, that model and that delivery uh, way of delivery. Uh, and you can find that on, on the tmap.net website. Um, within high performance, the, we distinguish uh, Scrum and DevOps. And uh, within this book, in the new book, we uh, especially focus on, on DevOps, uh, as the, the title, of course, already suggested. Um, and uh, interesting fact maybe to know is that the, 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 the uh, word uh, on forehand in, in the book uh, is written by uh, Patrick Dubois, and uh, he is actually the the creator of the, the name DevOps, uh, uh, as you might uh, all maybe know, uh, that he introduced the, the, the terminology DevOps. Uh, um, and yeah, well, we're pleased to see that he has written a part for an introduction in the book. If we look at, uh, at DevOps specific, uh, then uh, we uh, distinguish six activities for DevOps. And as you might notice, uh, you didn't put testing uh, as a separate activity. Because as uh, already put in, in the introduction, it should be integrated in, in the people and in the process. Uh, so that's why we don't make it a separate activity within the, the DevOps uh, activities. It should be integrated uh, as more like quality in, in the broader sense in all activities that you uh, that you do as a, as a team. Uh, within the book, we also uh, go into uh, DevOps uh, principles and, and the six that you see now on the screen, they also come from the, the DevOps handbook. Uh, and these are the principles which we use as the basis for, for DevOps. Uh, coming from that principles, uh, we use the following definition and I uh, will not go to read it out fully, but uh, I think it's it's good to uh, to see that uh, we take uh, it as a, uh, a systems engineering culture, uh, and that's that's where we um, also from that perspective we have written the book. And so uh, yeah, we use this definition as, as a statement also to to put some boundaries on what we define as as DevOps. Okay. So in the title of this book, uh, Quality for DevOps Teams, we focus on teams. And if you look at the first letters of the word team, you can make uh, a nice sentence. Together, everyone achieves more. Um, so uh, we want to emphasize that uh, we all have a kind of uh, function, but uh, the role is more important. So everybody uh, at a certain point in time or uh, at a specific moment, we can um, take the role of a developer, officer, of a tester, um, or a business analyst. Uh, so we want to work as a functional, high-performance uh, delivery team. And we, as authors of the team uh, of yeah. the book, have also done so. Eh? Yeah. So we were a cross-functional team ourselves. To, uh, and we, we can uh, distinguish uh, three uh, large uh, areas of 
uh, yeah, functions, roles, uh, and when these uh, and the combined area of these roles um, are combined in the in the DevOps uh, principle, and you can uh, read more in depth about the, the common roles in uh, chapter 16 and about the uh, personal and the interpersonal uh, skills of people in a cross-functional team in uh, chapter uh, 36. Yeah. So this picture also shows uh, that some people are mainly in their own area, but there are a couple of people that really share knowledge from the different areas uh, that we distinguish. It's also good to see that uh, uh, although we talk about multidisciplinary teams and cross-functional, we still do recognize that you don't have uh, people who can do everything and you still have some sort of expertise within it. But, uh, you all are complementary to each other and uh, as a team you are uh, strong. Yeah, and very important is that nobody in a team has a monopoly on a certain role. So the team together uh, achieves all tasks and if one person in the team would not be available the team should still be able to continue their work that's the main thing of a cross-functional team and then we come to the slide uh, continuous everything uh, with this high performance uh, IT delivery uh, we want to uh, maintain a certain or we may we want to maintain a high quality IT system uh, and to do this, we need to uh, continuously monitor and uh, uh, testing and, and maintain quality into the system. Uh, and we can do this uh, by um, implementing CI/CD pipelines, uh, where we can um, automate uh, the plan, the code, integrate deployment and operating, um, and of course, the monitor of your IT system. And in a couple of slides, you will. Tell us a little more about CI/CD pipelines, don't you? Yeah. All right. If we uh, look at, at the QA and testing, um, within this book, we distinguish uh, QA and, and testing topics. Uh, we define 20, uh, in total, 20 topics, which we categorized in, in two categories, uh, organizing and performing. Uh, this is not exact exact science, but so you can debate maybe uh, within your context that uh, maybe some topics should be uh, uh, organized within a different category, but this is more like an example and, and the head, st yeah, head start for, for you as a team and organization. But these are 20 topics which you should address uh, within your QA uh, approach and, and, and within your whole delivery cycle, actually. Um, where because these these topics group together the activities that must be done for QA and testing. So we, uh, th this gives an overview of all the things that need to be done to have proper QA and testing in place. And um, well, here you can see uh, all uh, 20 topics, um, yeah, which uh, give you uh, some, uh, some pointers as, a, uh, as an organization uh, which uh, you can do. And of course, within the book, we uh, uh, dive into all 20 topics and explain uh, yeah, what, what we mean with it and, and how you can set, uh, things, uh, set things up. Um, these topics can apply to every IT delivery model, but of course, as we mentioned in this book, we zoom into DevOps. Uh, so this is a picture which has a quite prominent place in, uh, within the book. Uh, and here you can see the, the, the topics related to the DevOps activity. And as mentioned before, a QA uh, and testing should be integrated within the whole process. Um, so all these activities, they are integrated, uh, or all these topics are integrated in, in the, the activities. Um, I think, that, yeah, that's, that's uh, good, to, good to know. And, um, they come back, uh, can come in every activity. Uh, one of the topics is uh, quality measures. And uh, within the book, we distinguish uh, 10 uh, quality measures. Uh, again, this one we will explain in detail uh, in the book. Uh, 
for example, the, the uh, feature toggles, which can be a quality measure uh, where you can toggle on or off a certain functionality within your uh, application. Uh, and that is uh, a way of controlling uh, the quality of your uh, system. Yeah, so we see there are quite a number of uh, quality measures. Some are uh, uh, very well known, like for example, root cause analysis and others maybe new to you, like specification and example, which we uh, described based on various uh, approaches that are currently very popular. Um, but it would be too far to dive into detail of all these quality measures in this um, uh, webinar. Another thing is about testing. Um, and there's basically two types of testing, of course. There's dynamic testing, where you execute the system and see what happens. But there's also static testing. And um, we have noticed that uh, uh, while creating this new uh, or renewed uh, body of knowledge for TMAP, that there are some new developments that are very important uh, to keep in mind when doing static testing and reviewing. And I would like to give two examples of that. One of the examples that also is very prominent in CICD uh, is the so-called pull request. Because the, the idea of a pull request is that one person in the team changes something in the IT system, for example, adds a new feature. And then when this uh, person is ready with all the work on creating it, uh, so that may be coding and unit testing, etc. Then he uh, puts out a pull request and somebody else from the team should then uh, pull the new feature in the main branch. But also before doing that should review what the other team member has done. So this is an uh, uh, automatic form of informal reviewing uh, that comes with CICD uh, if it's properly done. Another um, way of reviewing is what we call the four amigos approach. You may have heard of the three amigos approach before. And three amigos generally is business analyst development and testing. And in the four amigos, uh, since it's DevOps, obviously ops also comes uh, in the picture. So it's the four roles, including operations, that uh, from their own perspective do a review on uh, everything that needs to be delivered. Um, some other static testing techniques that you may notice here is, for example, uh, threat modeling, which is closely related to security testing, um, on which we also describe a uh, chapter in the book. Then, very important for uh, um, building confidence is uh, reporting. Now, to be able to make reports, you first need to monitor what's happening. So that's the monitoring part. If things are happening that are not as planned or expected, you need to uh, uh, do control activities, yeah? so change uh, things that are happening. And then we have the reporting and alerting. And alerting means making sure that not only a report is sent, but also it's used and specifically actions are taken whenever necessary. And we have described that it's very important to have three different levels of reporting. We have the so-called detailed reporting, which is mainly important for the team itself. It contains all the details that people in a team need. The second level is the overview report that may be interesting, for example, for a product owner to have an overview of what's happening. And there is the high level reporting, which may be, uh, or which mainly is important for uh, high level stakeholders like business directors, etc. Um, and an important thing that we describe in this book is that uh, reporting should be 
done based on confidence. And then you may wonder, how can you plan confidence? Because in the graph and on the left, you see that we have a, a blue line that says planned confidence. And we have the other line that says the actual confidence. And confidence can be measured with the indicators, like we said before. Uh, but you also should have an idea when should we achieve which level of confidence. And suppose that if the level of confidence would reach a six, then it would be we would be confident enough to take the system live. And in this example, you can see that we expected to reach level six about week seven. And actually, currently we are in week eight and we are just below this confidence level. So that would mean we would be confident enough to start using the system. Um, and confidence is basically a, an aggregation of several other indicators. And in the book, we describe much more on how to uh, measure these indicators, how to report on them, and how it will finally build your feeling of confidence. And then the picture on the uh, right is about high-level reporting, where you often report only in smileys, and you can report in two aspects, which is the product and the process. So the product is that uh, the IT system that we are creating, and therefore we measure quality and risk. And we have the process, so how does the development or uh, change process go, and there we measure time and cost. Um, and together they are the angles that uh, could be sufficient to make a high-level report. On to you, Dennis. Okay, a, a few slides back, we saw something about uh, uh, continuous everything. Uh, and here you see a more detailed approach on how to implement that continuous everything into automate everything. Uh, we have roughly uh, eight, uh, well, it are seven steps, but we have the eighth step that is uh, the pipeline uh, continuous monitoring and feedback. Uh, and those uh, seven steps, we can uh, divide them in, in two parts. Uh, the CI part, which um, um, consists of the, the sourcing stage, build stage, and the team test stage. So there, the scope is limited to the uh, to the team. So we are actually deploying something and, and building something, but the scope uh, is still to the team. And when we are continuing uh, to the CD part. Uh, we are also um, getting more involvement of the business. Uh, and in the end, of course, uh, uh, we deliver to production. Uh, the, all these steps uh, are giving feedback and uh, sending the metrics back to the, uh, to the monitoring system. And then we can continuously improve our product and our uh, quality of the product. Okay, thank you. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and of course uh, these um, these blocks. Uh, you can you can you can have more or less blocks in a pipeline, but we roughly see uh, five building blocks in a CI/CD pipeline. Uh, and we are not going to talk about the, the, a tool, a specific tool, but we are uh, mentioning um, capabilities of a building block in a CI/CD pipeline. So we with continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, continuous deployment, which is the uh, next step, uh, and a step which is continuous above all the steps is uh, monitoring and measuring of uh, quality and testing. Yeah, and so Dennis, we, we uh, in the book, we do describe a little bit about tools, but because tools yeah. change very often and capabilities are stable, yeah. uh, we have chosen to to show these capabilities uh, and give them a prominent place, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Um, then you may wonder about the test variety. So how do we decide what testing actually should be done and how should it be organized? And first thing, we would like to share with you is that we made this very clear distinction between progression testing, regression testing, and confirmation testing. 
And the idea here is that with progression testing, you test new things. So if new features are added, the testing that is focusing on that, we would call progression testing. Since in uh, uh, continuous delivery, you always are changing current situations, you always need to do regression testing to see if the already existing stuff still is working properly. So regression testing is also a very important part of the whole. And we have confirmation testing, also called retesting, uh, to check whether uh, fixes of previously found problems have been properly done. Now, as Dennis already said, in the uh, CICD pipeline, automation is very important. So you need to know what tests to automate and how to automate them. And a very well-known uh, graph is the so-called testing pyramid. Um, and when we were uh, writing the book and discussing this pyramid, it's, we were struck by the fact that most people see it as just about automating and, and expect everything to go automatically. But uh, what we noticed and what we have now written in this testing pyramid is that it is uh, very important that during the development of the automated tests, a lot of manual testing happens. And actually, often, most of the uh, anomalies that are found by the testing here are found during manual testing when preparing the automated test. So that's something we would like to make you all aware of. And this manual testing is more about the progression testing, whereas most of the automated testing focuses on regression testing. Then another thing is the so-called testing quadrants, because you want to distinguish uh, where to do automated testing and where to do manual testing. And these quadrants, they read from uh, the lower left side to the top and then going uh, clockwise to the lower right side. So first we see where technology is important on the lower side and it is to guide the team in their work. That's where you do unit testing, for example, with test-driven development, and the tests actually guide the team towards creating the right quality. Then above that is more of a business focus, and that is about uh, integrating uh, IT and business processes, and still most of the tests there can finally ultimately be uh, automated. On the right side, we see that it is about assessing the product, so seeing if the product really meets the, uh, the business demand. And that's where testing should mainly be done manual, that's the end user test, uh, because that is very important in uh, getting confidence that it actually does what it should do. And on the lower side, where it's technology accessing, uh, assessing the product, it's often about the non-functional tests, such as performance testing, security testing, etc. And these are often automated or largely supported by tools. So that's how these pyramid and uh, quadrants help in defining the test varieties that you would need. Like uh, Rick uh, uh, stated uh, in the previous slide um, about uh, the various uh, testing um, varieties, um, uh, code coverage uh, is a popular metric, which is uh, very popular by, by uh, managers and several uh, uh, roles. Uh, code coverage is not always uh, a good metric, but you can improve. Uh, uh, code coverage um, metrics by applying more um, test design techniques and then the, the code coverage or the decision cover of the branch coverage will uh, improve. Uh, 
because of the often line coverage is, is used, but it only shows that a line was hit by a test, but right. probably not everything in the line. No. no. And so, so um, um, that's why, uh, and, and tests are also built. Eh? They are engineered by somebody who can also make a mistake or not uh, building a complete test, ex uh, exhaustive test. Uh, so that's where a mutation testing com comes into play. Uh, and mutation testing is about uh, adding a mutant into the actual source code, and then you run the test again, and then you test if the test detects the mutant. And if it doesn't detect your mutant, then you should add more or uh, new unit tests or better unit tests to detect the mutant in your code. So it is a test, uh, a test for the test of the mutation test. Right. Um, we've given you like a, a brief uh, overview of topics and, and the content of, of the book. As uh, Deepika mentioned in the beginning, eh, the launch will be uh, March 17. Unfortunately, due, due to all uh, Corona viruses, uh, we cannot have a, a live event or at least a, a physical event where we meet with all our clients and, and, and uh, also colleagues. But uh, we will uh, create a, an online event uh, where we will uh, yeah, officially launch the book, uh, but not only the book, also the renewed tmap.net website uh, where you can find the whole uh, body of knowledge um, from tmap where we cover uh, the, the, yeah, the various uh, forms of IT delivery models as mentioned before. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, there are people who have QA and, and testing challenges can find information which might help them to face these challenges. Uh, yeah, I think a, a large, a big change that you will uh, notice is that it's uh, not only aiming anymore for people who are already in, in testing um, expertise, but also it will be uh, easier for like developers or business analysis or, or product owners to find relevant information about about QA and, and testing, um, which uh, is applicable uh, to, to them. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to the 17th, where we can uh, officially launch it and then uh, go to clients with, the, with this new uh, oh. book. Um, yeah, one final, oh yeah. Want to, uh... <laughs> well, I, I wanted to add one of the uh, things that we can now do because the, the uh, event, like Wouter said, will not be with audience. Um, and we will make a live stream event in Dutch, but we will also record an English version of the uh, book launch event. So that will be available uh, right after the 17th that you could share with your uh, uh, clients, uh, your audience. So we try to make this uh, a, a positive uh, change in that sense. One final remark about uh, the book, uh, as, as Dennis and Rick mentioned in the beginning, it, we're a multidisciplinary team uh, looking at a team of authors. But uh, yeah, it's not only created by the four names uh, on the cover. Uh, there is a, a large group of people who contributed to, uh, to the book, uh, as you can see uh, on your screen now. Uh, yeah, it's uh, from, from not only Society, but also clients from Society, uh, and not only from, from the Netherlands, but uh, yeah, actually from all over the world, uh, people contribute to, uh, to this book. And uh, we're very grateful for all these contributions and, and the efforts that people uh, put into um, yeah, making this book to what it is now, and that we uh, finally can, can release it now, and we have, uh, uh, we have this, this book and renewed uh, body of, uh, of knowledge. So, uh, yeah, thanks to all contributors. Yeah, thank you very much. Then you may wonder if you or your colleagues or your clients would like to know more about uh, TMAP, where can you learn more? Well, you can. We are busy creating training courses. And actually, the upgrade training course that you see on the left, that will be a one-day training course that's uh, is meant for people that already know 
TMAP uh, at the level of having a TMAP certificate. Um, and that training course updates people in one day for um, yeah, what are new things, what, are, uh, what is added. Um, and then we will build a certification scheme, and which is uh, uh, what is uh, quite new that we can now announce is that earlier this week, we uh, signed a contract with uh, ISQI, which is a uh, certification provider uh, that is well known in, uh, in the world. It, uh, they do a lot of certifications already all over the world. And we are very happy that we can work together with them making sure that people can do uh, TMAP exams uh, all over the world. And we will create three certifications. The first one is called TMAP Quality for Cross-Functional Teams. And that's a, uh, um, a training course that is meant for everybody who is in or works with cross-functional teams. So it's the team members like business analysts, developers, Races people and testers, but it's also security people, performance people, whatever, and business uh, uh, people like a product owner, uh, but also supporting people like Scrum Masters or, or Agile coaches. So everybody involved in this uh, training course, which is three days and it will end at the end of the third day with an uh, exam so that people can actually. Uh, achieve a certificate. Um, and on top of that, we have two more detailed uh, training courses. And one, the so called TMAP High Performance Quality Engineering, is meant for people that are mainly involved in performing. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, or as you remember, uh, Wouter earlier mentioned that we have two types of topics the performing topics and the organizing topics. Well, that's also the split we made here. So the first uh, uh, the, the training on the top is for performing people and the training course organizing built in quality at scale is for organizing people and especially this last training course will hold a little more knowledge than just what is written in the book because uh, quality at scale also refers to the scaled agile framework and we do describe a bit about that in the uh, hybrid chapter in the book, but we intend to create some more content for the website, tmap.net, and include that in the uh, certification for organizing. And the time frame we have for these training courses is that the up upgrade training course will be available by the end of March. And uh, the tmap quality for cross-functional teams will be available uh, yeah, just before the summer. And the other two will be available in the autumn. So that's the uh, time frame for this, uh, this number of training courses. Then we would uh, like to finish this presentation with four statements uh, that help you in your role in making your clients benefit from the team at Body of Knowledge. So how can you help your clients Firstly, it is by promoting quality engineering for cross-functional teams and making sure that everybody in the team works together uh, and the team together can do everything that's needed. Uh, the second is automate everything with your CICD pipelines and the book supports you in what capabilities are needed if you build a CICD pipeline Obviously, we always repeat that automate everything uh, has the little note with it, everything that is useful because it, automation itself is not a goal. The goal is to deliver quality at speed. And of course, we have all these activities bundled together in the 20 uh, QA and testing topics. And uh, the new team at Body of Knowledge supports you to apply that in your IT delivery, no matter whether you're doing DevOps, doing Scrum, or doing traditional IT or hybrid, like in SAIL. So then we also would like to call upon you, if you have good practices, 
please share your good practices so that we can include them on the TMAP website so that your good practices will become part of the TMAP body of knowledge. And that way we use the TMAP body of knowledge to the benefit of all of us. And, and that is all of us within Society, but also within our clients and actually for the whole world. Because over the last 25 years, and because you may know that TMAP celebrates its 25th anniversary this year, over the last 25 years, we've learned that by sharing all this knowledge, we actually gain the most benefit for uh, our company as well as for our clients. That brings us to the end of the story that we wanted to share with you. And we now have time for questions and answers. So uh, Deepika, would you please help us in uh, whether there are questions already? Uh, not yet, uh, Rick, uh, but um, attendees, uh, please feel free to share your queries through the chat and Q&A sections. Uh, we, we are now at the Q&A series of this particular uh, webinar. So please let us know any of your uh, uh, thoughts, suggestions, or any anything which you would like to check, ask the speakers. While we are waiting for the first uh, question to come what you may find interesting to know about the book is uh, it's a we started off writing a book with the aim of having a book about 200 pages now that the book is ready we notice that we have over 400 so it's uh, quite a lot of knowledge put together there and um, the book contains eight parts and I would like to uh, uh, briefly mention to you the parts that we have. First, of course, we have an introduction part where, for example, we introduce the voice model that we saw before. Then we have the uh, IT delivery models that uh, Wouter introduced during this webinar. The part three is about the QA and testing topics. So what are the topics and an introduction to each and every topic. And these topics, they apply basically to every IT delivery model. In the book, in part four, we describe the organizing topics for DevOps, and we describe the uh, performing DevOps topics in part five. So there, we cover all the topics specifically for DevOps. Part six will be about quality measures and skills. Uh, we, during this webinar, we showed you a list of the uh, 10 uh, quality measures. Well, they are uh, extensively described uh, further in the book. Chapter seven or part seven in the book is about test varieties that we just showed you a little bit about. And part eight will be or, or is about test design. So that's how to create your tests. And in this webinar, we mainly focused on static testing. Um, still on, uh, there's also a lot of test design for dynamic testing. Um, and uh, well, you can read a lot about that as well. Yeah. Um, so we have the uh, first question from Sachin Marge, who says, uh, you talked about DevOps quality measure. Any idea how we can actually measure any tools, any reference KPI? Uh, Deepika, it was quite hard for us to hear the question. Is the question shown somewhere? Can you? Uh... Is it in the Q&A box? Because we don't it's see it in the chat section. I can read it out once again for you. So the question uh, Sachin asked is, uh, you talked about DevOps quality measure. Any idea how we can actually measure any tools, any reference KPI? I'm what I understand from it is that the, the question is uh, how you can uh, measure the, uh, the improvement on, on the quality. Okay, uh, measuring uh, how quality improves um, is, is part of the monitoring activity that we have. Uh, we've described it both as part of DevOps and we described it as part of the uh, CICD pipeline. Um, and uh, of course, measuring this progress is 
by using indicators. Uh, so there should be specific indicators that uh, define uh, the quality level that we are striving for. And then by comparing the me measurements at various points in time, we do see how uh, quality evolves. I think what's also relevant in this context is that uh, where we, uh, in the book, we mentioned also the goal question metric approach. Um, if, if you want to create indicators or, or measure things, then it should be very clear why, what is your, your ambition? What is your goal you're uh, aiming at? So, uh, of course, we give some examples of indicators you can use within the book, but uh, they are uh, purely examples. And you really should know, okay, how do I, um, what is for me relevant and, and what's relevant to quality for me? So. Uh, your goal should be relating uh, to that sense, and, and there you can turn your indicators on. Okay. Right. I see a uh, next question coming. We in. have um, we have the next question from Vijayan who asks, uh, "Does this ap approach work for SAF E two? Can you repeat the question? So the question is, does this approach work for SAFE2? Safe. Oh, safe. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, um, we have described about the scaled agile framework in the book. Um, for example, we have mapped the topics to the layers of safe. Um, and um, we are working on making a more extensive description of that because since safe was not the main focus of the book we described mainly what is in safe the lower levels and for the higher levels we are working on that and we will publish that on the TMAP body of knowledge the, the website and also um, we may uh, make uh, physical applications for that uh, in the in the near future but that's uh, this moment. Also, in, in the chat box, I see another question by uh, Shoab Kamal. And his yeah. question is Is the book planned to be printed on circular across society and Gemini, Gemini delivery locations? Well, the book will be available in two different forms. One form is a printed form. And actually, we have asked our publisher to print 5,000 copies. and of these 5,000 copies, 1,400 have already been ordered by various uh, society countries. So a lot of the society countries will receive uh, books uh, at the beginning of next week. And the, the schedule that the publisher uses is to make sure that the books will arrive next week in all these countries. So some have been uh, sent already. For example, I know that Australia ordered uh, a box of books. Well, it takes some time to get there from Europe. Um, and then the second form is we will have a so-called EPUB version. And um, well, I mean, maybe I can reveal a little uh, surprise, but to everybody who is mentioned in the thank you, they will receive a personal EPUB uh, version uh, before the book launch uh, next Tuesday. So that will be in the next couple of days. And for everybody else, the EPUB will be available from the website of our publisher, which is www.ict-books.com. Um, and um, uh, this uh, this EPUB can be bought on the website, but also within uh, Society and Capgemini through the uh, marketing and communication people, there should be uh, vouchers available, or at least the marketing and communications people know how to get these vouchers. And these vouchers can be used, for example, to uh, give these books uh, to clients. Um, so, yeah, it's both paper books and uh, uh, electronic books. Do we have any other questions? So I personally have a question uh, for all of you guys. Uh, so I 
wanted to know uh, basically what were the challenges you faced during uh, you know um, when you were planning to write this book or how it was the journey of it yeah okay so the journey we had towards this book it was quite a ride <laughs> um it started off like over a year ago when leo van der aalst who also made a lot of contributions to this book uh, and i sat together and we thought we should make a next step in tmap and then quickly talking about devops we realized that that uh, devops is a cross-functional thing. So then we involved uh, uh, Berend and, uh, uh, and Dennis, who have a, uh, a development background. And yeah, together, uh, we, we went on a journey and to, to work together. And, and um, yeah, what were your experience, Berend? Yes. Uh, yeah, oh, Dennis, sorry. <laughs> no, well, Berend well, couldn't be here. Sorry. Well, but my, my he's listening. Yeah, yeah, he's listening. He's, he, it is his birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, yeah. Berend. <laughs> um, uh, well, my personal challenge during the writing of this book was uh, that Rick said it should not be uh, more than 200 pages and that uh, you have to write a lot of information in just a few sentences. And that was for me. Uh, Because what people maybe wouldn't believe if we say it's 400 pages, but still we put a lot of effort yeah. in keeping it brief. But, but we have so many topics because we already have the 20 topics and we have various other subjects. So we have 48 chapters in the book, um, but I think there's not a single chapter more than 10 pages. Um, so, so they're quite brief, all of them. Um, and, and also keep in mind, this is not a book that you read from cover to cover. Uh, it's, it's a book to uh, look up the things you need. And also, of course, having a book makes that you have all the knowledge bundled together. But keep in mind that most of the knowledge will also be available on the TMAP website. And we will keep the TMAP website up to date with new developments. So on the TMAP website, we actually have even much more information than we have in the book. And what are your experiences? Well, for me, it was the, the first time to uh, ever uh, be part of a uh, book creation. So <laughs> it was an experience on its own. Um, but uh, yeah, also the whole process of really creating a book was, was uh, for me uh, a journey. And, like, things like finding the right images, uh, fitting the text. Uh, it's not only about the words you uh, put on the, on the paper, but also the, the supporting images, because there are quite a lot of uh, images uh, uh, within the book. Um, so that, that was uh, something which was uh, very, uh, yeah, I learned a lot from. Uh, also the, the whole reviewing process of when it went to the publisher and uh, they, Changed little things uh, which um, looked like a small a change, but uh, completely uh, changed the, the whole uh, meaning of a, of a, uh, a line. Uh, so that, uh, yeah, for me, that were all new elements of uh, working with your uh, expertise of QA and testing, but now also trying to transfer it into uh, something tangible like a, like a book. So that, uh, that was for me a very uh, interesting but very uh, very nice very very joyful yeah well and, and i can say we we all will be very proud at the beginning of next week when we get these physical books uh, that the publisher informed us today that they will be shipped to our office so they will arrive next monday so we're very curious to hold the book in our hands and uh probably will be very proud and and what we especially like very much is that with the book and this website, we can support all of you in making your work easier and better and supporting our clients in what they are doing and also emphasizing to our clients that we actually have a lot of experience and knowledge uh, because we have noticed over the years and because I've been involved in multiple books before and every time again, you, you find that Clients, if they see a book, they really understand that you're a company that 
has a lot of skills, knowledge, and, and also is willing to share this. And that's what clients really appreciate from our approach. Well, that looks like a nice finalization of this webinar. I see we almost yeah. need the hour. Right. So uh, thanks all. Uh all the participants for joining us in this and a special thanks to all the speakers who took time and uh, letting us know more about these details even before the book launch has the, has itself so thanks all for joining us and making this um, a very interesting webinar yeah thank you everybody bye-bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.